Good afternoon, everyone. I, Ajay Modok, welcome you all on behalf of Institution Innovation Council, Tripura University, in this webinar on taxonomy, cultivation, and molecular identification of mushroom, organized by Mycology and Plant Pathology Lab, Mushroom Division, Department of Botany, Tripura University. Today, we are privileged to have with us Dr. Shonjit, Shonjit Devnath, research scholar in Department of Botany, Tripura University. We also have us Ms. Atri and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rahul Shah to uh, continue this program. So over to you, Mr. Shon uh, Dr. Shanjit, to complete this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Myself, uh, Dr. Shanjit Devnath, and recently I have completed my PhD under the guidance of Professor Ajay Krishna Shah, Department of Botany, Tripura University. Uh, I am grateful uh, to Institution Innovation Council Ministry of HRD Initiative uh, to give me this uh, opportunity to in front of you. Today, I am here to present a research topic entitled Morphological Basis of Mushroom Identification. Now, first of all, the background. Fungi have been uh, known from the Silurian period according to the archaeological evidence in the Paleozoic era, and the diversity of the fungi had improved by the Peninsulvian period 286 to 320 million years ago. Fungi are one of the diverse kingdom of eukaryotes and important major biological constituents of forest ecosystems. Mushrooms can be defined as a macrofungi, have a unique floating body which can be hypogeous or epigeous, enough to be seen with the naked eye and easily handpicked. According to monarchy, India is enriched with mushroom flora as one, of, one third of the fungal diversity of the globe exists in India and only 50% of this have been characterized till date. Now the main purpose uh, of this um, a presentation is identification of wild mushroom. Identification of wild mushroom um, were done by the different literature survey that is a monograph like Plagler, Purkaya, Chandra, and some web resources uh, for identification and confirmation of wild mushroom are also available like a mushroom expert, micro keys, etc. In this slide, uh, I have uh, shown to you that a different website uh, from which uh, we can identify the mushroom uh, by the morphological characterization, with the help of morphological characterization, like mushroom expert, micro keys, uh, QMS, uh, MSSF, etc. In this slide, uh, this slide shows the um, uh, classification of fungi. Uh, actually, fungi are classified uh, in five phylum: uh, Zygomycota, Ascomycota, Basidiomycota, Chytridiomycota, and Deuteromycota. So, out of these five, uh, majority of the mushroom belong to the phylum Basidiomycota, and some of the fungus like Xyleria, Morellis, etc., are belong to the uh, phylum Ascomycota. Now, the uh, characterization for the identification of mushroom. Actually, mushroom identification uh, on the basis of morphology is grouped under two categories. One is general characters, uh, another is microscopic characters. General characters actually observed during the field study or the um, on the basis of morphology. And microscopic study is mainly based on microscope, uh, which is uh, two categories. Uh, one is pileus or cap, another is type or uh, stem. This figure shows the um, this part is cap or pileus and the basal part which attached to the soil or the substrate is called the stipe or stem. Now the characteristics for the identification of uh, fleshy fungi that is a mushroom. First one is general characters. General characters means uh, those characters which are uh, easily observed with naked eye like habitat. Habitat means uh, the substrate which, which is suitable for the um, growth of mushroom like soil, leaf litter, lignocellulosic waste means uh, different uh, decomposed uh, wooden log, etc. Grassland, mucilaginous substrate, uh, dung, different types of dung like cow dung, etc. and burnt ground. These are the habitats and habit. Habit means a settled tendency or usual manner of behavior of mushroom growth. 
these are amanitoid which belong to the group of amanitasi mushroom agaricoid means agaricus type of mushroom lepitoid means lepita lepiota group of mushroom coprinoid means coprinus group of mushroom uh, etc other feature other features uh, means epigeus or hypogeus hypogeus means uh, who, uh, hypogeus means uh, mush mushroom those are grow above the ground or hypo sorry epigeus means mushroom those are grows above the ground or hypogeus means mushroom those are grow under the ground odor different types of odor like fungoid pleasant unpleasant um, uh, ammonia like and fishy smell different type of uh, odors are available on different types of mushroom test different type of test there there is a uh, three to four types of test basically one is mild not distinctive sweet uh, sweet type of test um, acidic type of test bitter type of test etc and uh, other is a vegetational community different types of vegetational community were documented during the observation of general characteristics or morphological characteristics and the forest type uh, mushroom different mushroom grow on different types of forest uh, like a uh, coniferous angiospermic mix like um, uh, one mushroom that is rasulla that uh, this type of mushrooms grow in um, uh, uh, angiospermic forest and some of the mushroom like agaricus grow in grassland or mixed for mixed type of forest so it, these are the important character or another character is a spore print which is the which is one of the most important character for the mushroom identification a spore print means uh, color of the um, spores these are the important character for the morphological identification this slide shows the um, uh, orange or yellowish type of uh, spore print of mushroom and uh, this figure shows the different parts of a mushroom like pileus or cap uh, universal veil hymenium that is gills or lamellae, um, uh, enulas or ring. This is enulas or ring. It, it this uh, um, the uh, the, the stipe part that is uh, stipe that is stem is the main part which attaches to the pileus and um, attaches to the substrate. It may be uh, soil, wooden log, etc. And uh, volva, volva or veil, universal veil, veil or mycelium, mycelia. These are the anatomical features uh, of mushroom. Some mushrooms uh, start fully enclosed with the universal base and the ground that is uh, hypogeous and then gradually um, uh, germinate to above the ground. These are the different uh, morphometric characters uh, which can be easily observed during the field study or the uh, laboratory study like uh, the shape of the pileus, different type of uh, shape were documented uh, like uh, ovoid, globose means uh, circular, ellipsoidal, cylindrical means cylinder shape, hemispherical, convex, uh, broadly convex, uh, uh, alphanate, uh, depressed, depressed means uh, the um, central part is slightly depressed, uh, ambonoid, ambonoid means is um, slightly is, uh, spiky, conic, conic means uh, con slightly conical shape. Hmm. Uh, and funnel shape, funnel shape or sunken means a funnel like structure. Some of mushrooms grow like funnel like structure. Uh, another uh, figure, second figure shows the lamellae tube attachment. Lam attachment to the lamellae to the stipe is another important characteristic, like free. Free means uh, lamellae do does not attach to the stipe. Uh, Adnex means slightly attached. Mm, so, 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 sinuate means. A slight um, part uh, of the um, lamellae attached to the stipe. Uh, adnet means attached. Uh, narrowly adnet means narrow, narrow um, lamellae narrow, narrowly attached to the stipe. Uh, sub decurrent means attached to the stipe uh, at the middle part of the middle of the part. Um, adnet with the decurrent tooth. Tooth-like structures are uh, observed in this type of mushroom. So uh, these are the lamellae tube attachment. Margin of the pileus. Different types of margins were observed during the um, morphometric identification of the mushroom. Like smooth, smooth means totally smooth throughout the um, margin of the pileus. Um, uh, crenate, crenate means slightly um, crenate shape. Straighted, straighted means uh, slightly um, uh, cutted down the pileus. Wavy means wave-like structure. Elf, uh, appendiculate, appendiculate structure. Rhymos, rhymos like structure. 
and these are the um, surface of the pilias these are some characteristics of surface uh, like smooth smooth surface uh, velvety matlab some slightly spiky structure hairy means hair like structure scales some scales are present like uh, lepiota mushrooms flat scale flat scales are observed uh, in uh, agaricus mushroom patches some patches are observed in amanita mushroom these are the some structure uh, this sh structure shows the um, different types of uh, stipe attachment to the soil like equal equal stipe means uh, total stipe is equal shape uh, club shape means basal part of the stipe is club shape this part bulbous shape means uh, basal part of the stipe bulbous shape uh, with cap means bulba present when uh, to the stipe basal part of the stipe uh, rooting rooting means mycorrhizal fungus macrofungus uh, with rhizoid rhizoid rhizoids are present in some fungus <clears throat> This picture to shows the uh, different types of lamellae. Mm. Uh, space means uh, in between two lamellae there is a space present. Close means close means uh, we are unable to separate each other. Uh, intermediate gills means some intermediate gills one two three sorry uh, one two three gills are present in between two complete lamellae. Uh, Anastomizing gills means uh, some gills are attached together and to uh, last, uh, lastly attached to the stipe. This picture shows the different types of lamellae gill spacing. Distance, slightly distance, means to, in between two complete lamellae, there is a um, gill present which is not attached to the stipe. Close means uh, the, in between two lamellae, there is a three to four uh, incomplete lamellae are present. Crowded means to, um, we are unable to separate each and every uh, lamellae from uh, by uh, with the hand. Shape of the stipe. Different types of shape, stipe were observed like equal, clavate, ventricles, uh, valvos, fusoid, fusoid radi radicating, etc. Now the microscopic character. Microscopic character means uh, sectional view of uh, pileus and stipe. This pileus uh, picture A shows the sectional view of gills. Here we observe the gills. Gills. This is gills which contain the uh, basidium and basidiospores. Pic, uh, picture B. Picture B shows the structural detail of gills. Gills contain three layers. That is uh, hymenium, trauma, and Subhymenium. Subhymenium means uh, the just uh, below the uh, hymenium or basidium, and trauma means the hyphal coil structure which is present the central part of the uh, sectional view of gill. And figure D shows the gill in surface view gills, um, which contain the um, basidium and basidiospore as well as paraphysis. Paraphysis means the, these are the sterile basidium which are unable to um, produce the basidiospores. These are called paraphysis. Figure D shows the um, um, gills, uh, some part of the gills and figure E shows the uh, basidium with uh, sterigmata and basidiospore. Basidium, this is, this is the basidium and it contains Four to two or four basidiospore. Uh, these are called basidiospore, mm, round like structure. And uh, the attachment of the basidium and basidiospore is called sterigmata. These are the different types of spores, uh, in, uh, different types of spores which were observed uh, in, under the different group of mushroom. Now the conclusion, this type of study provides the baseline information for the researcher to do various studies or research on the mushroom in future. The identification of mushroom diversity is not only for the ecosystem, but also for human diet and health, which are uh, also necessary for uh, different uh, study like conservation, how the different biological activities were performed by the mushroom uh, cultivation, which is an important factor nowadays, um, economic importance of the wild mushroom. Thank you to all for hearing my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Shanjit, to for your valuable words. Now I request Ms. Atri Datta to continue this webinar.
over to you atri you ajay hello am i audible yeah yeah you are okay so first of all good afternoon everyone present in this session so i am atri dotto from department of botany mycology and plant pathology laboratory and i am doing my research work under the supervision of professor ajay krishna saha today i will talk about the identification of mushroom on the basis of some molecular approaches and i will try to discuss uh, the uh, or i will try to give some information how we will perform this kind of technique in our laboratory so we already know that is that there are very many more morphological characteristic and many more morphological approaches that is present there for identifying a mushroom so basically why that is a question that is coming always that is the why so molecular techniques that is needed for the identification of a mushroom so because that needed because morphological information always carried a limited amount of information about the mushroom fungal systematics because the fungi they are very uh, they are simple morphological structure and uh, due to the evolutionary convergence and parallelism they changes their characters means according to the environmental condition they changes their phenotypic as well as the genotypic characters so that's why we have to depend on the molecular characteristic for identifying a mushroom as well as the morphological characteristics so here the modern te molecular techniques especially the dna barcoding techniques potentially be applied for identifying and recognizing all mushrooms and overcoming the different sets of traditional criteria that used for describing different types of mushrooms so basically these techniques that employs the use of different types of genetic markers and specifically this genetic marker actually recognize the different coding and the non coding portion that is present in the fungal genome and usually the nuclear encoded encoded ribosomal rna so combination of morphological studies and molecular phylogenetic analysis provides a good uh, tool to understand the systematic and species of mushroom so now all of these techniques that is first start with the isolating of genomic dna from the mushroom samples so basically we using here seed modified ctab method and it is very reliable and cost effective method so for the extraction of the genomic dna from the mushroom sample either we can use the fresh fruit body of the mushroom or we can easily take a mycelium mushroom mat from the 15 days old liquid culture medium so then we crush the sample with extraction buffer and the extraction buffer that contain different concentration and different amount of solutions and here we using the fresh beta mercaptan ethanol here and after the extraction the whole sample that is transformed into a fresh tube and then allowed to incubate the whole sample for about 60 to 65 minutes at 60 to 65 degree centigrade and lately the sample was centrifuged for about 10 minutes at about 10000 rpm and then the supernatant was taken and an equal volume of chloroform and isoamyl alcohol added to it lately by several process of vortexin and centrifugation and after continuing sorry to that... interrupt sorry to interrupt me satri uh, uh, your slides uh, your slides are not um, uh, changing it shows first slide only are you change your slides okay okay you can full screen
now you can see the slide yeah 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 we can thank you yeah, yeah. thank you okay so now at the last process we the last process we are doing twice and ultimately we able to get a good concentration and a good quality of dna now here is the second question that how we will check this dna or how means the concentration or the quality of the dna so here we doing two process we sim first we simply measure measure the optical density of the dna using the nanodrop and second one we simply run the dna into the gel electrophoresis so here in this picture this picture that showing the genomic dna isolate, isolating genomic dna into the gel electrophoresis and here we are also using a molecular marker to identify the concentration of the dna uh, geno genomic dna so that is the whole procedure of the isolating of the genomic dna now next things and the main important thing is how we are doing the species identification or sequencing mainly the sequencing part that is coming so that is also known as a dna barcoding here so dna barcoding that is a powerful technique for species identification and nuclear ribosomal dna especially here we using the internal transcribed spacer region that have been target excellent targets for studying genetic relationships of mushroom and this is because the ites region are highly conserved among the interspecies but variable between the interspecies and they are very easy to amplify even if we have very small quantities of the dna so now next question here that is the how we design the primer here because for the amplification we need some primer here right so how we ampli how we design this primer here so in this case we have to depend on the morphological data so first based on the, then the after the basic morphological data then we search the available nucleotides that is present in the gene bank we just download it and we you we also using here the cluster w software and the stretches of the conserved region that were considered for the primer designing so that is the procedure for primer designing and after doing all of the procedure next the pc and the genomic dna along with the pcr master mix and in between the pcr master mix we using different kinds of solution like uh, magnesium chloride dntps uh, then pcr or buffer tag polymerase that is the most important thing tag polymerase and we are using two different kinds of primer that we design on the basis of the morphological data and the previously nucleotide sequences that is we found from the gene bank so here we are using two different kinds of primer one is the forward primer another one is the reverse primer so then the all the mixer that amplification reaction employed for the thermal cyclic condition followed by uh, the due first the process that is the denaturation then the aligning and the extension so the initial denaturation process we done that is the 95 degree centigrade for about 7 Atridi, are you online?
sorry for the technical issue now i request to mr rahul shah research scholar tripura university department of botany tripura university to continue this webinar mr rahul shah over to you hmm. okay okay Ajay, my slide is clear. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You can start. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Myself, Rahul Shah. Uh, PhD scholar under guidance of Professor Ajay Krishna Shah sir. Today I am going to uh, present the mushroom cultivation techniques. So earlier uh, other two speakers uh, tell about mushrooms. Now I am uh, telling about only the cultivation. So finds an intensive with high profit venture provide ample opportunities for gainful employment and small farmers, landless laborers, women and unemployment youth in rural areas. According to Wikipedia, there are more than 20 species that are globally cultivated. The developing countries like India with rich biodiversity of mushroom are a born for process in field more and more important in our diet for their nutraceuticals. India has a wide range of agro climate condition and a largely an agricultural country with a cultivated area about 4.37% generating about 620 million tons of agro waste annually. Agriculture based industries produce large amount of residues every year. If these residues are released to the environment without proper disposal, produce the may cause environment pollution and harmful effect on human. One of the main problem to be faced all over the world is disposal of both the large quantity of agro-industrial waste and the residues driven from the livestock activities. According to the Food Sustainability Index, a global study on nutrition, sus uh, sustainable agriculture of food, food waste, which collect data from 67 countries around the world. Every year, the world po population on average waste 37 kg of food per person. Most of the agro industrial waste are untreated, unutilized, therefore in maximum report, it disposed of either by burning, dumping, unplanned landfilling. These untreated waste create different problems with climate change by increasing a number of greenhouse gases. Commercial production of fresh edible mushroom is a fast growing industry activity that can be carried out in a large or small scale. It is efficient and relatively short biological process of food poetic materials utilizing the degrading capabilities of mushroom. It can convert huge lignocellularitic waste materials into a wide diversity in pro uh, products. Likewise, producing mushroom using agricultural waste in residues such as rice straw, coco peat, rice burn, coconut husk and banana leaf litters can be considered as economical suitable solution to the too much presence of agricultural waste materials since it is highly regarded as one of the most efficient biological way of both recycle and use this waste by products. Mushroom are relatively easy to cultivate and a one of the most profitable agribusiness idea that require low investment and less space. Mushroom farming is an efficient mean 
for conservation of agricultural waste into value, protein, and present huge potential for generating additional income and employment. In India, the full potential of mushroom biofilling process such as mushroom cultivation is current economical viable biotechnology which involves the production of protein rich food from material that would otherwise considered as waste and being a mean to overcome food insecurity challenging issue to low and middle income countries hence nowadays mushroom cultivation technology is being a promising candidate to fight food insecurity along with the reduction of environment environmental pollution apart from their nutritional and medicinal value they have now we are cultivating mushroom okay so why we consume mushroom we have to know the nutritional value of mushroom cultivation mushroom are good source of numerous nutrition nutrients they are excellent source of selenium riboflavin and copper are good source of niacin pantothenic acid and potassium Mushroom also contain rich amounts of thiamine, zinc, vitamin, protein, folic acid, fiber, manganese, and magnesium. On the other hand, mushroom are low in fat, sodium, and calories. Now, the main purpose of this workshop is techniques: how to we cultivate mushroom, how to we uh, culture the mushroom. So, this is for the. Uh, mushroom cultivation first step we have to do the mushroom tissue culture fresh and tender mushroom are selected for tissue culture mushrooms are teared into many small segments pre sterilized blade needle or scalpel are used to cut the tissue and this small piece of mushroom tissue are taken for further culture mushroom tissue is inoculated into agar medium petri plate and sealed with parafilm in incubated impregnated petri plate are placed at 25 to 27 degrees celsius probably with the less light for one week mycelia forms of petri plates are then transferred into pda medium for long time maintenance now after collecting the mycelia we have to go for the mushroom spawn everyone known as a mushroom seed so for the spawn culture for the spawn culture preparation we use two types of substrate one is liquid substrate and another is solid grain substrate for liquid substrate and solid grain substrate potato juice we sorry liquid liquid substrate we use the potato juice and add some amount of glucose in it for the uh, solid substrate we use wheat wheat for grain so there is a different kinds of grain we use like uh, rice like corn etc before we use that wheat we have to wash it in a running tap water and boil it for 40 minutes and all the excess water drained off with 2% calcium carbonate and 2 uh, 5% calcium sulfate and uh, after mix it properly we uh, packed it in polythene bags and tied up with rubber band and autoclave board the substrate with with grain at uh, 21 degrees centigrade at 15 psi for now for spawn culture for now we are preparing the substrate now and uh, now we are going to the spawn culture how we uh, uh, cultured the spawn pure culture of mushroom mycelia are transferred into two different substrate for uh, for liquid culture we cut the small pieces of mycelia and dip into that dip into that uh, liquid uh, liquid substrate and wait for 2 to 3 weeks then we will get that liquid mycelia and for the grain spawn then we are use we cut the separate sections on for uh, this uh, mycelia and put the mycelia into that grains 
after after two to three weeks for two to three weeks we get the mother spawn now the main things for the commercial uh, spawning for it is called sub spawning for sub spawning some procedure was followed as earlier after preparation of bag some amount of mother spawn are placed into the bag and tied up after uh, 12 to 14 days we wait spawn are collected then we go for the main things the mushroom color now we have the uh, mushroom seeds now we go for the cultivation so here we use the three methods like uh, for sterilization of the substrate first one is soaking method second one is autoclave method third one is hot water treatment 100 liter of water tank at 450 ml of formaldehyde with 31 gram of devastin adding stake of substrate took for 12 to 14 hours remove the stake fill the polythene bag with substrate and spawn now we are coming with the second method that is autoclave method the cutting straw substrate are in uh, uh, are bagged packed with the polythene bags and autoclave at 121 degrees centigrade for 15 15 psi and cool it in room temperature and fill the polythene bags with substrate and spawn now the third method we have preferred the third method method why we are preferring the third method because as a lay farmer they could not have the autoclave it is like 60 to 90 thousand to pay uh, for buy the autoclave and the chemical procedure if they are using the more amount of formaldehyde or the baby stain there so it will be carcinogenic for human beings so we are going for the third method that is hot water treatment method and it is the easier process to do, do the cultivation so what water treatment method you just cut the pieces of straw soaked into boil what hot water for wait for 45 to 60 minutes then cool it to the room temperature then fill the polythene bags with the substrate and spawn this is the easiest process now the steps of mushroom bagging how we bag the mushroom raw materials like peri straw wheat straw grasses there is so many agri agri uh, waste agricultural waste as present so here we mention only two names Cro cropping that straw uh, into uh, two to four inch filled up with snake uh, deep into the hot water like 80 to 100 degree centigrade drain of the excess water on cooling to the room temperature bag filled with the layers of the substrate supplemented and spawn make some hole on the bags and plug it with cotton so why we make some holes in that bag because of the aeration after the mycelia is co covered running then uh, at that time we are plug of that cotton after 15 to 20 days the pin head will be formed crop fruit flush crop fruit flush three to four days duration of after peanut formation and subsequently flushes about seven to ten days interval peak on maturity then we are go for the marketing it will be uh, fresh or dry now this is the picture representation how we do the actual process now uh, first picture we, we are show that, that the soaking of the straws the so uh, soaking soaking the straws in hot water uh, spreading the boil straw for cooling layering the spawn into the straws then hanging the spawn inoculated bags into the plastic thread with the help of the plastic thread then we see after 19 days we are getting the mushroom flushes and we collected the cultivated mushrooms now the, the conclusion part Considering the nutritional status, antimicrobial and antioxidant properties of, uh, of properties as well as the anti-cancerous properties also, I am not mentioning here, the cultivation technique for specific varieties of mushrooms are urgently required to be developed for combating malnutrition as well as the boosting the health status of 
uh, consumer. Commercial cultivation of mushroom utilizing agriculture and industrial waste material will be beneficial source of income generation along with the waste management and could be an important sector for our future food production. Determination of nutritional uh, constituents of cultivated mushroom may help to develop a nutrition needs rich diet to reduce the threat of malnutrition. Thank you all for uh, hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rahul Shah for the demonstration of mushroom cultivation techniques. Now I request to Miss Atreyi Datta to complete her part, which we are missed for the technical issues. Atridi, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Ajay. Thank you one second, because and I'm sorry to everyone for this technical issue. Atridi, you can start. Okay, you can see the slide. You can see. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, you can full full screen your presentation. Okay, okay. So it is visible, more visible to us. Much more visible. Okay. okay. So, hello? Yeah, Didi, please Am I continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you are, you are. Please continue. Okay. Okay. So here I'm talking. I'm talking about today that is the identification of mushroom on the basis of some molecular features. So and I will discuss and I will try to give some information about how the how this kind of techniques we performed in our laboratory. So here is the main important things uh, that is the why we are doing this molecular things because already different kinds of and different kinds of techniques and different types of methodolo methodology that is available for the molecular study morpho sorry morphological studies but why are we doing this the molecular study because the morphological information that alone that has been shown to be a limited amount of data for fungal systematics due to their inherent, inherent simplicity, evolutionary convergence, parallelism, and phenotypic plasticity. So that's why, that's why for this due, different reason, we have to depend on the modern molecular technique here. So modern molecular among the modern molecular technique, that is the DNA barcoding, that could be potentially applied for the identifying and recognizing all of the mushrooms and overcoming the different sets of traditional criteria that is used for describing the different types of mushroom. And basically this kind of techniques that uses different kinds of the genetic marker. And this genetic marker actually specify the coding and the non-coding portion of the fungal genome. Usually the nuclear encoded ribosomal RNA that is the rRNA here. So, Ultimately, the combination of the morphological study and the molecular phylogenetic analysis that provides a good tool to understand the systematics and the species of the mushrooms. So for doing all of these things, first, the first thing that we have to do, that is that we have to isolate the genomic DNA here. So for the genomic DNA isolation, we just simply uh, followed the method that is the modified CTAB method. So we crush the sample uh, from the fresh fruit body or the we select uh, the liquid mycelium mat from the 15 days old culture medium. So here we crush the sample with the extraction buffer. Now the extraction buffer, we prepare the extraction buffer with different kinds and different concentration of the solution. And here we using beta fresh beta mark up to ethanol here. Then after the extraction, then the total sample now transform into a new tube and then we are allowed to incubate it for about 60 to 65 minutes at 60 to 65 degrees centigrade. Then 
After the samples are centrifuged for about 10 minutes at 10,000 RPM. Lately, the, uh, after the centrifugation, the supernatant was taken and an equal volume of chloroform and isothermal alcohol added to it into the 24 is to 1 ratio. Then followed by the vortexing and the centrifugation. Then after applying this procedure by two eyes, then we able to get a good quality of DNA. So here is the main important thing. Here is the question coming that how we able to identify but how we able to recognize the concentration or the quality of the DNA. So that's why we applied here the two procedure here. So for the first thing, in the first procedure, we just simply measure the optical density of the isolating genomic DNA. And second one, we simply run the DNA into the gel electrophoresis. So this picture that's showing the isolating of genomic DNA. And here we using a molecular marker. The molecular marker, we can use the different kinds of the molecular marker. That is the 1KB, 2KB, then 3KB, different kinds of molecular marker we can use here. And from this molecular marker, we can easily identify the concentration or recognize the concentration of the genomic DNA. So that is the whole procedure of the genomic DNA isolation from the mushroom samples. And lately, that is the more, most important thing that is coming, that is the species identification. So, or we call that is the DNA barcoding. So DNA barcoding here is a powerful tool for the species identification. So here, but we are using normally the ITS barcoding loci here. So nuclear ribosomal DNA, that is the RDNA, especially here, the ITS means the internal transcribed special regions have been excellent target for studying genetic relationships of mushroom. So this is because the ITS regions are highly conserved among the interspecies and but variable between the interspecies and are very easy to amplify even if we have very small quantity of DNA. So we can easily get that added result or we can sequence in the product also. So here is the another question is coming the how we design the primer here. So, so in this case, we have to depend on the morphological data here. So based on the morphological identification, we just uh, depend uh, about download the available nucleotide sequences that is already present in the gene bank and then we are using also the cluster w software here and the stresses of the concept region that is also considered here for the primer design so that is the all of the procedure for the primer design and that is also an important part for this because without primer design we can simply we did not able to get when we do not able to get the PCR amplification also. So after doing all of the things, then ITS is then amplified by the universal primer here. So ITS that is the universal primer for the fungi, and we are using here two types of primer. Means one is the reverse primer, another one is the forward primer with the PCR master mix. Now in between the PCR master mix, we using here as well as different kinds of the solution, just like the that polymerase, that is the most important things here, DNTPS, then the uh, MDM, magnesium chloride, PCR buffer, etc. And ultimately, the amplification reaction employed for thermal cycling condition for the initial denaturation at 95 degrees centigrade for about one minute. And next, that is the uh, next step that is the followed by the Aninine and the extension step. So we are doing that about only about 30 cycles here. Then the PCR amplicons analyzed by electrophoresis to confirm the expected size of the product. So here, this picture that is actually showing the gel purified PCR product of isolated from isolated from the mushroom sample. So here we also using a marker here. You can easily see here to uh, identify the concentration of the PCR product also and sorry and ultimately that is remaining PCR product were purified by the PCR cleanup kit and lately the sequencing was done by the capillary electrophoresis DNA sequencer. 
So after getting the sequence data, we just constructed here the phylogenetic tree from the distance matrix values by the neighbor joining method and the distance were computed the maximum likely composite likelihood method. So now this picture that showing the phylogenetic tree of the here is the total eight different kinds of the eight mushroom species present here and this phylogenetic tree that showing the how the mushroom species they are closely associated with each other or how much evolved from the each other so and in which position actually they associated with each other so we actually easily identified to all of the data from this phylogenetic tree so advantage that is the most advantage of this technique that is the molecular identification actually enrich and provide additional information to mushroom biodiversity and gene bank that database that this was adding to the molecular phylogenetic analysis and here because we using normal in our lab that is the ITS region of the nuclear uh, ribosomal DNA so this is also been used to validate the inconsistency in macrophage taxonomy if a, at the species level and most important thing with the use of this technique, we can easily identify also the, the subspecies level also. And at the end of the conclusion point, I just want to say that, so if both morphology, we have to depend on the both morphological and molecular data, if we want to a complete database of the mushroom taxonomy. So, and most important things that is the different kinds of the molecular markers, especially the PCR based DNA markers, they are very quick and reliable resources to establish and the identities of the wild mushroom as well as the mushroom taxonomy. So, thank you. Thank you everyone for hearing me and giving me the opportunity. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Atri Datta for your scientific enlightenment. Now we conclude our today's session here. I can't see any questions in our chat box. So we conclude here. I hope everyone gather valuable knowledge from our speakers. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining.